and thank you very much for having me and us today. My name is Fabian. I'm a co-founder and COO of Keyless. We are a deep tech cybersecurity company building passwordless, privacy-preserving biometric authentication solutions that are based on more than 10 years of research in biometrics and cryptography. And today I'd like to talk about the state of authentication and biometric authentication in particular, the challenges and opportunities uh, we see the industry is facing um, and the approach that we take at Keyless to address these gaps and give an outlook on the future, what we see ahead of us uh, toward working on a more personal paradigm, user-centric paradigm of managing our identities, which I think Prashant uh, very well introduced uh, just now. Um, and here we are. So yeah, just a few words on, on Keyless uh, to start with. Uh, we provide passwordless authentication for the workforce as a frictionless login, single sign-on, uh, universal biometric multi-factor, and for the consumers as a GDPR and PSD2 compliant strong customer authentication capability that allows businesses to strongly authenticate their users with a simple look into the front-facing camera of any device without being dependent on the hardware vendor or operating system. We're a team of experienced <clears throat> cybersecurity and privacy experts, and two of our co-founders, professors, Paolo Gasti and Giuseppe Attenese, are among the world's renowned scholars in privacy and security and have been working at the intersection of biometrics and cryptography uh, in privacy-preserving security protocols uh, in combination with modern biometric authentication methods for more than a decade. And together with our team, uh, we're embarking on our mission to enable anyone to seamlessly access any digital service from any device while keeping your personal data safe, private, and under your control. And before we talk about the status quo of authentication, let me start with um, two rather obvious thoughts or questions that may highlight the underlying issue. Um, one, when was the last time you had to reset one of your passwords? And in your personal and maybe also professional life, um, do you reuse uh, your password for more than one account online? If your answer is yes, <laughs> you're, you're not alone. In fact, more than half of IT leaders reuse a single password uh, for all their services online. Um, so what should we expect from the average user to do different? And what we know from practice is that people don't follow password best practices, but rather choose a password that is easy to remember, um, and not only one that's easy to remember, uh, but also very likely reused uh, across various services online. What's also true is that in, uh, in practice, uh, among other facts, that passwords account for more than 80% of all data breaches that we see, uh, about 50% of all help desk calls uh, in the enterprise, uh, which makes a simple password reset cost about $70, according to Forrester. So the password, which has been around for about 60 years, um, is a big challenge. And when it comes to authentication, we're not only talking about passwords. And when we talk about authentication, we refer to the act of verifying or proving our claimed identity, um, most commonly through username and password that we initially established and had verified when we opened our account, onboarded to a bank, uh, or as an employee uh, with our employer. Uh, and it's an act that we're all involved in multiple times on a daily basis. And generally, when we talk about authentication, we have these three authentication factors. One, an inherence factor, something we are, um, such as our physical or behavioral biometrics. Uh, a possession factor, something we have, such as a password, uh, such as a device, um, like a hard token, a mobile phone. And three, a knowledge factor, uh, something we know, such as a password or a PIN. Uh, and each of these authentication factors have their own advantages and disadvantages, uh, which brings us to the underlying challenge uh, for digital identities and authentication more broadly, uh, which Prashant highlighted as well, which is the trade-off between security and privacy versus convenience and user experience. And we touched upon the password as a knowledge factor earlier on, uh, which in theory can be quite secure, uh, even though choosing, remembering, and managing dozens, if not hundreds of unique passwords and pins to access our online services um, can be quite cumbersome and complex for us as users, but not only for us as users, also for the businesses who have to secure and store and manage our personal uh, data and credentials, which is typically done in a central database that attracts hackers to execute data breaches and that can result in compromised privacy and ultimately in a significant financial burden. And biometrics, on the other hand, are quite convenient and they're unique uh, to us as individuals. Um, there's nothing we need to remember. Uh, it's easy. However, 
it's a very sensitive type of personal data. And the collection, the management, and the storage of biometric data is a far larger burden uh, for companies from a security and privacy compliance perspective. In addition, because biometrics are unique to us uh, as individuals or human beings, we cannot simply change them uh, as opposed to a password, for example. So, in fact, most companies have security policies in place that involve the rotation of user credentials. Um, so the act of uh, replacing or changing a password, say after 90 or 180 days. Um, and with biometric information, that's impossible as one only has one face or one fingerprint. Uh, and it's very ill-advised to keep that data stored in, in a central place or database. So in order to perform stronger authentication, uh, we need to combine multiple of these authentication factors. And in fact, that's what uh, our PSD2 um, requirements or our European Open Banking Framework suggests with the strong customer authentication requirements, typically combining a device, um, verify by generating a PIN code in a secure banking app or through an SMS uh, or email code that we receive with a password as something uh, we chose and know, um, which may be further protected um, and unlocked by our local biometrics um, and then shared with a dependent party such as a bank when we are logging into our mobile or online banking or making a payment and wanting to authorize a payment from our mobile device. And research shows that uh, security ranks um, as a much higher priority when it comes to money related applications such as mobile banking. However, when it comes to social media, for example, um, security drops as a priority and convenience, for example, in the form of social logins, like the Facebook connect button, uh, becomes much more important. Uh, so at the end of this, uh, we're achieving stronger security at the expense of an inconvenient, inconsistent authentication experience. Uh, and today, we observe several key trends in the market that drive forward a new passwordless authentication paradigm based on the increased adoption of biometric um, modalities. And this includes, on the one side, a more and more mobile workforce, an environment of rapid digital transformation, not the least uh, COVID-19 certainly accelerated that massively, including technical capabilities and standards around authentication that are emerging, specifically uh, biometric authentication, and high consumer and employee expectations uh, of solutions that deliver an exceptional experience uh, across all channels. And Gartner, the research firm, um, predicts that by 2022, 60% of all large enterprises and 90% of small and medium-sized enterprises will implement passwordless authentication methods. On the other side, um, we see several drivers for the adoption of biometric technologies. Um, the most obvious is customer experience. We touched upon earlier to provide um, a simple and fast way uh, to authenticate ourselves. Uh, the second is uh, yeah, a trend, unfortunately, in growing fraud and cybercrime. Uh, for example, during the months, the recent months of the pandemic, uh, we've seen phishing attacks skyrocket the levels of more than 600% um, of previous months. And lastly, a regulatory uh, push for privacy compliance and security. Uh, in Europe, of course, with the GDPR and the PSD2, strong customer authentication requirements, but we're seeing very similar um, regulations in about 60 countries globally. Uh, for example, the privacy guidelines uh, like the CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act in the US, uh, very similar with PDPA, in Singapore or the equivalent in Brazil um, that will go into effect this summer. So <clears throat> when we look at the evolution of authentication and take a step back from the trends we're seeing in the market today, uh, we realize that passwords have been around for about 60 years. Uh, in addition to password, passwords as the only factor and something we know, we've seen hard tokens, uh, something we possess as an added layer for security, specifically in the enterprise context, on the consumer side, we see soft tokens and SMS two-factor authentication. Uh, and now with the introduction, uh, or made popular by Apple's um, touch and face ID systems with the introduction of the iPhone, uh, we all use local uh, biometric authentication uh, that partially solve the user experience problems around having to remember a password, but come with their own and quite severe limitations around interoperability, reach, and thus penetration of these solutions. And looking ahead, we see a future that is focused around privacy, uh, where privacy isn't simply seen as a risk management or compliance function in a business, but, but as an enabler for business or strong consumer relationships uh, and a value proposition um, that can be offered to the customers. 
NetKeyless, we're building a platform that combines privacy enhancing technologies with machine learning and modern biometric authentication methods that allows for a secure passwordless and privacy preserving authentication and a user centric identity model, which is another trend that we're seeing in the market. Uh, and in the cybersecurity space uh, in particular, it's often referred to as a zero trust uh, security model that puts the user's identity in the center and emphasizes a more dynamic or risk-based approach to authentication at the actual application that is being used by the user rather than um, around the enterprise network and the firewall. And one of the elements within that market, um, which is further accelerated by the notion of a more and more uh, remote and distributed workforce is multi-factor authentication, which is a subset of the broader identity and access management market. And as discussed earlier, biometric technology um, as a passwordless mean for access control and multi-factor security uh, is very much in demand, but comes with uh, yeah, growing concerns around the privacy compliance and the protection of that data. And that's the main reason why we presently use local authentication technology when it comes to biometrics, where the biometric template is enrolled onto the device uh, that we as users are using uh, on a trusted chip or the hardware security module, which removes the need to centrally store and protect that information on a central database where that authentication process is executed. But on the flip side, it marries us as users to one particular device, um, one particular hardware vendor, biometric sensor or modality, um, that our end user devices are offering us. Um, and at Keyless, we are pushing this paradigm a level further, uh, and we're introducing the world's first zero knowledge biometric authentication platform that eliminates the need for businesses to store and manage passwords, cryptographic keys, biometrics, and other sensitive personal information without compromising on convenience and privacy for the users. Where as an individual, there's nothing you need to remember. You authenticate with who you are, you remain in control of your data, which also means that our solution is compliant to privacy regulations by design. In fact, far exceeds the requirements for GDPR, for example, as we are not processing or involving personal identifiable information, uh, which we can achieve <clears throat> through um, applying a novel distributed approach to biometric authentication that is based on a cryptographic technique called secure multi-party computation. And this process essentially allows the user to become their own key uh, and root of trust in any authentication process and is independent of the end user device, no matter what hardware vendor or operating system the device is running on. And essentially transform the user's face into a cryptographic key or password uh, in the simple case without having to involve a password, uh, biometric data or any other shared secret in the process, reconstructing the secret every time it's required, every time the user looks into the camera, meaning there is no sensitive information stored on the device, uh, neither in any central point on the server side or database. And it offers multi-factor security uh, by design, where if you as a user initiate an authentication, for example, you click on a login button on a website, or you want to authorize a payment uh, with a banking app that has the Keyless SDK integrated, the first thing we do is we verify that device that you're using through a cryptographic proof on a secret that we generate during the first time enrollment, uh, which is oblivious to the user and makes the phone uh, the token, but essentially allows you to use any device uh, that offers a front-facing camera. We then <clears throat> read the biometric input, meaning the user looks into the camera, uh, and we verify that the user is a real human being and not a video or picture, uh, which happens passively by default. You could also introduce an active challenge response, making the user look left, right, smile, or blink. And we're then extracting the biometric features, meaning we're not using the raw biometric data, uh, but we're extracting a signal out of <clears throat> the biometric uh, process, and we're transforming that signal, meaning we split it in pieces, and we're encrypting these pieces locally on the device. And then <clears throat> through our cryptographic protocols, you could think of it as end-to-end -end encrypted biometric authentication. We're matching these one-way encrypted shares that were generated out of your face when you looked into the camera uh, with those <clears throat> that we have stored on distributed network that we run and operate. And the result of this process is not simply a binary yes or no, uh, but essentially the recombination of um, your cryptographic key or your secret locally on your device for a one-time use. Um, so you could log into a service, authorize a payment, or sign a cryptographic signature, after which that secret uh, disappears. And we offer multi-factor uh, security by design in the process. And when we look at the 
three um, authentication factors we um, touched upon initially, the keyless authentication essentially eliminates the need for a knowledge factor uh, and to remember a password by letting the user become their own password. And multi-factor <clears throat> security is um, guaranteed by a device as the possession factor. And again, you could use any device you'd like to use, a mobile phone, a tablet, a desktop, or a laptop with a built-in camera. The face as a physical biometric, and we soon uh, will introduce behavioral elements such as keystrokes or swipes and the way you use your phone as a third or added layer of security in the authentication process, which we believe positions us uniquely in the market where we combine the user experience benefits of a universal unified biometric experience that is accessible from any device without having to store that data in a central database with the security and privacy benefits of local authentication technologies such as Apple's Touch or Face ID systems without marrying us as users to one particular device and fragmenting the experience um, from the company's point of view is um, we are all dependent on the end user devices, whether that's the hardware uh, or operating system uh, that yeah, us, uh, we as employees or end users are using. Essentially, we introduce um, several products on the markets along workforce authentication in the form of our keyless authenticator uh, and consumer authentication uh, with our keyless mobile SDK. And looking ahead, we're quite excited about um, yeah, the topic Prashant introduced around the personal identity management, um, where users are able to selectively disclose uh, their personal data in a more private and secure way. When we look at the workforce <coughs> authentication space, uh, the problem is pretty clear passwords are a problem not only for us uh, in our experience when logging into services, but also for the companies in terms of risk uh, and pure cost uh, when we look at the data. Um, where we have a passwordless solution that seamlessly integrates with current identity and access management systems companies have in place, um, either serves as zero or first factor. You put in a username and you look into the camera your laptop provides you or you receive a push notification on your device. You look into the camera and you authenticate with two factors. Uh, by design. This can also be a universal biometric multi-factor replacing hard tokens such as JubiKeys or RSA tokens, uh, which are things that we're working on with several enterprises. It could also secure access to VPNs uh, or VDIs um, and yeah, pretty much works across all platforms in terms of Windows, Mac and Linux. On the consumer side, we have uh, our keyless mobile SDK for GDPR and PSD2 compliant strong customer authentication um, which simplifies the user experience around having to copy paste pin codes that we receive via SMS or email or the need to switch to another soft token like a Google Authenticator or secure banking application um, and simplify the user experience around making and authorizing payments uh, from within the banking app. There is no need to uh, receive a pin and, and copy paste or switch to the soft token. The user remains in the app, looks into the camera and authenticates with two or soon three factors uh, by design and completes that strong customer authentication process in a much simpler way. And looking ahead, uh, we're quite excited about the user-centric uh, identity space um, or decentralized identity space that puts the user in the center or makes the bank or any organization uh, the identity provider and allows uh, these institutions to offer additional products to their users in the form of identity products uh, for us as banking customers to reuse our already established and KYC uh, identity information with other parties um, through selective disclosure or cryptographic techniques around zero knowledge proofs where we see the space coming from authentication, passwords to the shift to, to private biometrics, to the future of identity that puts us as individuals in the center uh, with no more usernames and passwords um, in the siloed identity systems um, as the internet is built or federated identities like the Google um, or Facebook connect buttons uh, that we currently use when it comes to more um, social elements and services to a user-centric um, paradigm or a peer-wise uh, connection from us and uh, another party such as a bank or utility company, um, which puts us at the same level, but underlying requires um, key management operations that we as users uh, need to manage. And if you think passwords are complex, cryptographic keys uh, certainly are as well. Um, and with our technology, we can tie all this to a simple uh, biometric authentication process and recombine that cryptographic key whenever it's needed. One of the elements or use cases um, very similar 
um, to, to MasterCard is education, which is going to a massive reform where we're also helping a university um, in Italy, uh, Luis, in a partnership with Cisco, our technology partner, and there's 10,000 students to sit exams remotely uh, who are using the Keyless Authenticator app to access uh, their exam sessions that are held on the Cisco Babex tool, their video conferencing tool integrated with our Microsoft Active Directory the university is using, um, which happened successfully from May up until last uh, week and will continue in September. Uh, with this, um, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please feel free and reach out to us uh, and our team. Uh, we'd be more than happy to discuss this further. Uh, with that, I open the floor uh, for any potential questions and wish you a great afternoon ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabian. Just uh, one question just to start things off. Just to, uh, I wanted to just check about your view on privacy and why companies should care about it at this day. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a great question. So uh, at present, we see uh, privacy as, as a compliance function, a risk management function, especially when we're talking about biometrics uh, and having to give consent or the storage of, of biometric data, especially around uh, GDPR when it comes to, to PSD2 in the banking context. Um, even though um, many of the, in the conversations that we're seeing is that um, the mindset is shifting and privacy is becoming more um, of an enabler for business or as a differentiation in terms of brand and product, uh, which is not only centered around compliance to privacy regulations, but the pre preservation of privacy as a fundamental human right, uh, uh, especially here in Europe, uh, but also as something that the consumers will be demanding more and more in the future. Uh, <clears throat> but the trade-off between offering greater privacy shouldn't come at the expense um, of poorer convenience. Uh, so this has to go hand in hand. Uh, and, I mean, hopefully we have um, something with Keyless that we can contribute to, to making this a reality in the future. Great. Thank you for that, and uh, and thank you for the presentation as well. And um, I think best because of the way time's running at the minute. Should you wish to get in contact with Fabian, you can do it obviously through the, the chat facility that will run throughout the day. But Fabian, thank you very much.